Hi everyone, this is Lily here with another Trans Girl CNC where we talk about comics, cartoons, and other awesome nerd shit. So, you might have noticed the changes of scenery. Uh, that's because I'm shooting from inside my house rather than at work because I have the evening off. And uh, because I didn't want to put the videos back to back, I spaced them out and it ended up being today would be my recording day. Now, I am going to do my normal recording at uh, the beginning of the week for next week's videos. But, I did want to give some space this time. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, yeah. So, this is this is my room. Uh, where I sleep. Normally somebody else is sleeping right now, but they're actually off staying at a friend's house. So, it makes it so that I can record, which is nice and good, because otherwise I'd have to figure something else out. But that's not important. Not important at all. Let's just kind of get into the video now. As I mentioned in the last video, I had still had so much to talk about as far as Digimon Try goes that I would need a part two, and that's obviously by the title, but that's what this is. This is our Digimon Try, Digimon Adventure Try video number two, part two. It's really, um, before we kind of get into it, uh, this is basically going to be where all our spoilers are for the most part. I kind of tried my best to shy away from a lot of spoilers. Uh, in the first video, just because in case anybody hadn't seen it, like I haven't seen it, and wanted to get into it, this video is going to be talking about <clears throat> spoilers and theories I have for, you know, the final video, which comes out once again in May of this year. May 5th, or because of May 8th. May 5th or 8th, one of the two. Not important. I often talk about things that are not important. So let's let's get into it. So, what a roller coaster this anime is! It's so, um, just as I might have mentioned, or I know I mentioned, I wasn't expecting the uh, gut punch that Did You Want to Try kept giving me over and over and over again. I cried like six times, six five times during the during each of the uh, the different. Parts. Now, the way I watched it is I watched it in segments on Crunchyroll. Uh, they originally all came out in like, you know, one movie, two movie, three movie, or whatever. They came out in big, long kind of movie chunks, and then Crunchyroll cut those down to actual episodes. And that's basically what I watched. Now, if you're hoping to find the uh, Digimon Season 2 kids in... The new in the new series helping uh, the original Digi Destin, as I mentioned, this does heavily focus on the original Digi Destin. Um, it kind of gives it gives it away in the first minute or so that those kids are tether missing, probably dead. Um, you see their silhouettes and even their Digimon silhouettes get like blasted away by something, which makes a, it really confusing because you keep seeing. Um, Ken, I believe his name is Ichijiro, yeah, uh, his older form popping around town, um, and it turns out that that's not even really him, that's just an avatar that a person from the digital world is using to come into the real world to kind of check and see how things are going, going, or, you know, with their plans to send in corrupted Digimon and basically try to force a reboot of the world. Um, as mentioned, there are two major forces in, in this. There's uh, Yggdrasil, which wants to, to destroy everything, and then there's Homeostasis, which wants to find a balance between worlds. And in the middle of this is the new Digimon and her partner, Mei, uh, Mei Koemon. Um, she is apparently the Digimon that was never supposed to exist, um, but she got a, a piece of Apocalypse Mon in, inside her. So that's what she has it inside her, and that's what causes her to create these disturbances in the digital world of the digital coding. Uh, it causes the infected Digimon to be infected, like it spreads out. And when she's feeling scared or nervous or angry, especially angry, the power gets, you know, bigger and she gets stronger and she lashes out more. Um, 
And as mentioned, there's a government agency that's like in charge of all the uh, digital acquisitions or digital problems as they come to the real world. And the head of that investigation, I forget what her name is, but she is shady AF. She knows everything. She knows what the problem is, how things, are, how the infections are started, everything. She doesn't give the DigiDustin anything to work with. She's like, oh, you know, Koshiro will figure it out. Izumi, he's going to figure it out. I don't have to give them anything. That's the excuse she keeps giving her her partner. She's like, you know, it's government secrets. I've got to keep it. You know, they'll figure it out eventually, but that's not true. She's trying to keep it under wraps the whole time. And it's so frustrating because you're watching from the sidelines and every time something bad happens, they kind of cut to her if she's, in, you know, nearby or in the scene. And she has, like, the smirk or the smile on her face, like, yeah, that's what you wanted to happen. And it's like, oh, God, I can't wait for you to be revealed to be um, a bad person so that I can be justified in my, in my opinion in being, uh, you know, suspicious of you. Because you're just doing some really shady, suspicious shit. And that's, it, it does come out. It does eventually come out that, you know, she was working with somebody uh, in the digital world to kind of force these things to start happening because we find out that the original Digidestin uh, from the first series are not actually the original, original Digidestin. Uh, it seems that things in the digital world happen all the time. Kind of, I kind of mentioned that a little bit. And there were people chosen before them, including this woman who's now the head of, you know, this government department, but her Digimon died. And he died out in the real world. Now, when, when Digimon die in the digital world, they do eventually get reborn into digital, turned into a, di a digi egg, and then, you know, the hatch. And it's still basically the same Digimon. But if they die in the real world, they don't come back. They are, their data can't process back over to the digital world, and so they're null and void. And so that happened to her Digimon. And so that's the whole reason she wanted to start the reboot, because it would you know, make everything the way it originally was, and it would bring back her Digimon. And that's real sweet and all, and I totally guess that if I were in a similar situation, like if there was a way to bring back my first dog and all I had to do was, you know, reset a world that wasn't my own, I might do that because I love my first dog so much. And, I mean, it's kind of weird to compare a Digimon to a dog, um, not saying that I don't love my animals, but the connection that the Digidestin feel towards their partners is way stronger than that of a master, uh, of a pet and its owner. So, there is that to consider. So, I kind of understand why she did it, and I don't fault her for doing that. Here's where it gets messy. Um, the reason that the Digidestin are trying to fight the reboot from actually happening is because they find out that if the reboot happens, you know, their, their Digimon get rebooted, uh, they won't remember them, they have to, you know, basically kind of start from scratch. Like, the, they are not going to remember any of their adventure, any of their bonds, you know, it's just, it's, it's like a blank slate. And this woman knows this. She explains this. She's the one who makes sure that they're aware that this is, you know, this is what will happen if you do this. Now, I did mention a particular scene in which that I, I cried a whole lot. Uh, it was a scene with all the Digimon uh, trying to push Mekomomon um, Mekomon uh, back into the digital world because the reboot was going to happen. Um, Izumi Koshiro had worked like his ass off to create a space within the digital world that the, their Digimon partners could go into in order to not only survive the reboot, like they would be cleansed of the infection that they had all been that had been slowly spreading through them. Uh, but it would 
they would still retain their memories and and their experiences. And he had worked really hard on this because he was like, You're, you'll get cleared, but I'll have all your data so we can just, you know, when you reappear, we can just, you know, load it up to you and then you'll know everything and then it won't be so bad. But the battle goes really, really south to the point that only Tentamon is left by himself. And he's evolved to uh, Kabuterimon at this point. But he's the only one, you know, fighting, you know, and trying to keep make Homon in the digital world. His friends have all, you know, they're all infected Digimon at this point, and they're helping make Homon. And it's such a powerful scene. He gets his final form, which is Hercules Kabuterimon, which is such a cool form. I love it so much. And he basically works really hard and his feelings and his heart reach out to his friends and they kind of help pull Mekomon back into the into the digital world and there's a scene uh, with Koshiro and him where Koshiro's like you know what, J just you get in the box Just if you get in the box, that's good enough, we can, we'll figure everything else out, but I want you you know, you're my friend and he's like, no I can't do that you know, how could I abandon my my friends, the other Digimon, and look out only for myself. I can't do that. You know, but it's okay. It's okay to say goodbye, right, in this form. Oh, I'm gonna cry. Ah, ah. Sorry, weird face, but it makes me just sad to think about it. But, anyway, reboot happens, and I'm just, this is all to a point I'm getting to, is that the reboot happens, the Digimon don't remember them, and they have to start basically kind of all over. Now, the reason I mention this is because the woman who runs the government agency uh, goes to the digital world of her own volition because she's going to find her partner Digimon. Now, remember, she explained to them that the reboot would affect their memories, or they wouldn't remember them. She explained that specifically. So she finds her partner Digimon, and he, lo and behold, it, it, she doesn't, Digimon doesn't remember her, and she gets all bent out of shape. Like, it's. She gets really angry and mean towards Tapiermon, which makes me upset because how could you be mean to a cute Digimon like Tapiermon? Um, she's like trying to hunt him down with a gun at one point. It's so weird, and it's just. I feel. Nothing but bad things towards that character. Even if I can understand her motives, I feel nothing but bad things towards her. And maybe that's what a villain's supposed to be. But as complicated a character as she is, I just there's nothing redeeming about her, and it just feels like a waste. It feels like a real waste. Um, the person who gets the shortest end of the stick, in my opinion, is Sora, because Bioman wants nothing to do with Sora after the reboot. She's like, you're making things up, you know, you're selfish, you just don't want to be alone. And it's really sad because Bioman was like the most connected out of all the partner Digimon to the out of all the partner Digimon to the Digi Destiny. It was Sora and Bioman had like the best bond and best connection. And it was really sad to watch Bioman keep rejecting Sora over and over and over again until they eventually they figured it out. Like it was awful the whole time. All the other Digimon basically were like, oh, they didn't remember them, but they were like, you know, you feel familiar, you feel safe, I, you know, I want to be around you. And they just kind of like picked up where they left off, more or less. They didn't remember anything, but yeah. And it was just really, really fucked up to watch Biomon be the only one that didn't connect to Sora or anybody and messed up. Very messed up. So we meet the person that uh, the woman from the government agency had been working with. Uh, it was uh, it was Jedi, uh, but not Jedi. One of his evil brothers? I don't know. And <laughs> your dog's running. And he's like creepy and he wants to destroy the real world, so the digital world can just, you know, be by itself. He feels that the Digimon 
uh, are slaves, and he's going to free them. And it's just, it's weird. It's weird. He's weird. He, like, licks May's cheek. It's gross. He's so gross and predatory. I disliked him a whole bunch. Um, but towards the end of the series, what we get is, or, you know, before we get to the next movie, is basically Mekomon's at her absolute peak power. Um, the forces of homeostasis and Yggdrasil are trying to either keep her alive or kill her. Uh, homeostasis wants to kill her. Um, Yggdrasil wants to use her to destroy everything. And their ambassadors are Alphamon and Jacemon. And apparently these two Digimon are so powerful they have the ability to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with Omnimon, who is a fusion of Metal Gurumon and War Greymon. And I don't understand why they have that much power. It doesn't make any sense to me at all, but they do. And it's weird, and it's dumb, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> that's my my one, like, real great. And at the end of the battle, uh, it looks like um, Taishi is dead. It looks like he died. So I don't think he's actually dead. I think he's going to appear in the middle of some point in the, in the final movie. And they're going to save the day. Right now it looks really bad. Mekomon is in the real world. The Digidestin and their Digimon are trapped in the digital world. They don't know how to get to the real world to stop what's happening. Uh, I mean, they're going to put a stop to it. There's going to be a, you know, a happy ending to all this. There has to be. It's Digimon. But... No, I don't know if um, it's going to end with all the Digimon and Digidestin uh, pulling their powers together and striking like a new blow and forcing the gate back open like it had been at the end of the second series. I don't know. Maybe they discover all the Digidestin who are missing. Maybe they're not dead. It's kind of alluded to the fact that they're dead. But I hope not. I really, in my heart, hope that they're not dead and we get that... Digimon Adventure 2 uh, ending that we got because it was such a good ending. Um, and that's everything. That's everything. I can't think of anything else to talk about. I probably talked way too long and way too much. Um, but this weekend, <clears throat> or the main video for the week, we're going to talk about another anime. We're going to talk about Sword Art Online, Ordnance Scale. That's the movie that came out just this last year. Uh, it was I enjoyed it. Uh, we'll talk about it uh, because there's going to be another Sword Art Online series coming out. Um, this year. So, uh, until next time, I'm Fire Princess Lily, and until next time, enjoy comics, enjoy cartoons, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!